Hi there, it's lovely to see you. I'm Lorna and we're reading The Boy at the Back of the Class by Anjali Q. Ralph and this is chapter 17, The Emergency Plan. After I had posted the letter, I felt as if a thousand worms and butterflies and frogs had all jumped into my tummy and were wriggling and squirming and hopping around together. I was even too excited to finish my chocolate chip cookies and glass of milk, which are my favourite Friday treats. When Mum got home, she kept looking at me and putting her hand on my head to see if I was falling ill. I wanted more than anything to tell her about the greatest idea in the world, but we had all agreed to keep it secret and I thought it would be more fun to surprise Mum with it all later. I spent the whole weekend trying to stay as quiet as I could in case my mouth said something when I wasn't paying attention. And even when Mum took me to a farm to see goats and donkeys and rabbits for our Sunday adventure, I couldn't help thinking about the Queen and if she'd gotten her letter yet. The whole weekend seemed to take forever to finish, but just when I thought it never would, Monday morning finally arrived. When I got to the bus stop, Tom and Josie and Michael were all waiting. She must have read it by now, said Michael, bumping into a lamppost in his excitement. We all paused as he quickly regained his balance and put his glasses straight. And I bet her special policemen are looking for Amit's family already, said Josie, starting to half skip and half walk again, bouncing her football up and down with a loud twang. Yeah, I bet they're jumping from special planes right now to find all of them, said Tom, gripping the straps of his rucksack as if it were really a parachute. We were still chatting excitedly as we got onto the bus and spent the whole journey imagining what else the Queen might be doing to help Amit. But Monday passed. And even though I looked up at Mrs Can after every break time, hoping she had something special to say, there was no sign that anything had happened at all. Miss Hemsey looked normal too, and when we asked Amit if anything exciting had happened to him, he looked puzzled and then said, Bag not smell anymore, look, before opening his rucksack and inviting each of us to smell it. On Tuesday it was the same, except this time all of us were feeling more worried than excited and the worms and butterflies and frogs in my tummy were starting to make me feel sick. What if she never got the letter, whispered Josie, as we were all making a drawing of different planets in the solar system. What if it got lost in the post? I don't know, I whispered back, because I really didn't. We have to think of something else, said Tom, glancing around to make sure Mrs Can wasn't looking. We've only got three days left until the gates close. Tom, back to work please, ordered Mrs Can, looking her way. We all quickly put our heads down low. I snuck a look over my shoulder at Amit, who was busy colouring in a large orange circle that would obviously Mars. Tom was right. For whatever reason, the Queen wasn't helping us. We needed to think of something else. We needed an emergency plan. I looked at my half-finished drawing of the planet Earth and turning it over, decided to draw it an emergency plan instead. While everyone else copied out facts about their planets to learn of by heart, I stared at the emergency plan and wondered if it could work. I wasn't sure that it would, but Dad always said you could only ever know if something would work or not after you had tried it out first. That afternoon, on the bus home, I showed the others my emergency plan. Josie looked at me and, placing her football underneath her chin, shook her head. That's crazy. Yeah, we can't do that. We get detentions for a year, said Tom. It's the only way, I said, looking at it carefully. This is what it looked like. Michael shook his head. We'll get expelled, he whispered, looking around the bus to make sure no one had overheard anything. No, we won't, I said, trying to sound more sure. The special police would never let us in to see her, said Michael. They will when we explain everything, I said. We'll go when she's having her tea. That way we can be sure she's in. Everyone fell silent. I could tell they were all thinking extra hard because Josie was biting her bottom lip and Tom was looking down at his tie with a frown and Michael was tapping a finger on the lens of his glasses. After a few seconds, Tom looked up and asked, how will we afford the tube ticket? It's okay, I said, leaning in. I've got some pocket money saved up. How much have you got? asked Josie. Four pounds and fifty-five pence, I whispered, so that nobody on the bus would hear. It would have been more, as I had bought some extra sweets last week. That's not enough for a ticket, tutted Michael. I've got eleven pounds and thirty-two pence at home we can use. 
I'll bring all my pocket money too, said Josie. Me too, said Tom, and all my brothers. But how are we going to get the tube tickets, asked Michael. Won't the ticket office people tell the police on us if they see us without a grown-up? We won't go to the ticket office. We'll just get them from the ticket machines, I said. I know how to use them. Mum shows me how to buy tickets all the time when we go on our adventures. Cool, said Josie, looking more sure. So, shall we do it then? Tomorrow, I whispered. Josie nodded and twirled the football around between her fingers. Michael looked round and pushing up his glasses, gave a nod too. And Tom looked over at Josie and Michael before giving me a thumbs up. Okay, I said, as I tapped the end of my pencil against my cheek and looked at the plan again. I'll get some tea bags, just in case she's not expecting us and runs out. I'll get some biscuits, promised Tom. I'll bring as much pocket money as I can, said Michael. And maybe we can all get a gift for the Queen, added Josie, you know, to make her want to help us. Should we wear anything special, asked Tom. Don't people get dressed up when they're meeting the Queen, like hats and dresses and crowns and things? Maybe we should put on our best clothes underneath our uniforms. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea, I said, and we can get changed in the toilets at the palace. Hold on. Michael looked at us, his large eyes even rounder and wider. We can't all go, can we? Mrs Can won't believe us if we say we're all sick on the exact same day. And what if she calls our parents? Everyone fell silent again. We all wanted to go and see the Queen together. But Michael was right. After a few seconds, Josie said, I can stay behind. My parents don't like me being friends with Amit anyway. They'll probably get really mad if they find out I ran away from school for them. Let me go, said Tom. My uncle's a policeman in New York and says 411 and Tango, Fox, Chicken and things, so I can talk to the Queen's special police. Michael sighed. OK, so I'll stay too, even though I've always wanted to meet the Queen. OK then, Tom will come with me, I said. Quick, it's our stop, cried out Josie, frantically pushing the bell. Later that night, as I got ready for bed, I wondered what Dad would have said if he knew I was going on an adventure to try and meet the Queen. I think he would have put on a record and danced around the living room, just like he did whenever he was really happy. That thought made all the worms and frogs and butterflies in my tummy settle down and helped me fall into a deep sleep, filled with dreams of my dad dancing with the Queen. Join me for chapter 18.